Hello, 10th graders. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to another lesson with Mr. Benson. Today's lesson will be week five, lesson 21. Today's joke of the day is extra funny. I think you'll finally laugh if you haven't laughed so far. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Tentacles, <laughs> like tentacles. So you should be watching the video that's called ELA G10 W5 L21. Today we're gonna to read The Good Life, which is what you read yesterday. We're just gonna engage in a deeper read of the text. And today we're gonna to focus on annotating the text really just for a close read. And the materials you need for today's lesson are listed on the lesson itself if you go down a little bit farther. So the learning target for today is I can complete close read annotations to infer a character's values presented in a poetry selection. And the poetry selection, once again, is The Good Life, which is what you read yesterday. Um, today, you're going to read it again and actually just focus on a specific portion of it to engage in a, in a close read process. And you're really going to be looking at the character's values to figure out how they sort of feel about different things in the life, particularly when it comes to money. So for the reading section today, you're going to review your first read annotations from yesterday, just to remind yourself of the gist of the poem. Then you're gonna close read lines five through eight specifically, and think about the annotations you marked when you're engaging in the close read process. And then um, mark details in these lines that show the way the speaker dealt with limited money. So you're really looking for how the speaker dealt um, with limited money when they didn't have as much money. Then you're gonna think about what the details might tell you. So what might you infer about the speaker's values based on um, the details you underlined when they didn't have that much money? So for the talk section today, you're gonna to talk to a family member, caregiver, or friend on this question. How do we determine what we value in life? What are some values you share with family members and or friends? So this is personal to you. You're gonna think about what you personally value but you're also gonna think about um, what are some values that maybe you share with the people you care about and love, like your family members and friends. And then if you want some examples of values, because you're drawing a blank, we have some listed here. Honesty, integrity, discipline, fearlessness, love, kindness, and perseverance. Again, there's way more values that exist in the world beyond just the ones listed here, but if you want a starting point, definitely use this list. For the writing section, you're going to respond um, in a paragraph to this question. What are some examples of things we can place a monetary value on? Use specific examples and or real life situations to support your point. So you can choose to use examples from the poem or just examples from your real life, but you're basically gonna try to, um, try to answer in a paragraph. Um, what are some examples of things that you personally can't place a monetary value on? They're just too valuable for, for any uh, dollar amount. And then just a reminder, um, these two sections specifically, the talk and write section, have um, places in the note catcher for you to jot down your responses to. And then as always, you're gonna close out with the same two things. First, you're gonna share your writing with someone. And then after you're done with everything, you're gonna read a book for 20 minutes and make sure you document this reading in the reading log. So today I'm gonna model for you the close read process of the lesson. And just a reminder, the close read process is sort of mentioned in the read and think part of today's lesson. So for the read part, it tells you what specific lines you should close read, which as it says here, um, that's lines five through eight. And as you're reading those lines and annotating, you should be annotating specifically for um, how the speaker dealt with limited money. You can, you can annotate for how the speaker dealt with um, having more money, but really the focus should be on limited money. And then after that, you're gonna think about um, this question, which is what might a writer infer about the speaker's values? So after you made some annotations about how the speaker dealt with limited money, then you're gonna make some uh, inferences about what you feel like this, this says about the speaker's value system. And I'm actually gonna model for you part of that today. So if you think back to yesterday, not only did you engage in the first read by yourself, we also spent some time um, looking at the poem and picking apart the different parts of the poem that dealt with um, when the narrator or when the speaker had less money and when the speaker had more money and we sort of figured out together um, what we thought the good life referred to was it when they had less money or when they had more money so the first thing i did just as a reminder was i underlined parts of the text that uh, related to when the speaker had less money and that was in red and then underlined parts of the text when the speaker had more money and that was in green 
And this is what we, we saw, basically lines five through eight were examples of when the, the speaker had more, um, sorry, less money. And then lines um, nine and 10 were examples of when the speaker had more money. We also spent some time pulling out the words or phrases that were used to describe those, those experiences for the speaker. And just at first glance, it may seem like the, the words to, to describe the speaker's experience with, with more money were generally positive compared to the words used to describe the speaker's experiences with, with less money. But once we, um, we unpacked it a little bit more, we saw that um, because the, the phrase was used like everyone else to describe the speaker's experiences when he or she had more money, um, we determined that basically the speaker doesn't um, want to be like everybody else and actually like having a little bit more money to fit in and, and have a roast chicken and red wine, a uh, glass of red wine for dinner is actually not the preferred um, experience for the speaker. And I made the inference that the good life actually refers to when the speaker had less money because there was so much detail with that and not as much detail with when they had more money and the, the phrase, like I said a second ago, like everyone else really stood out to me and made me feel like um, the narrator really preferred not being like everybody else and embraced the struggles that he or she had when they had less money. So that's what we talked about yesterday and you could have had a different interpretation. And so if you did have a, a different interpretation, the next part may be different for you because I'm what I'm about to do is I'm actually going to um, take what, what I went over with you yesterday and make some infer inferences about the speaker's value system based on these details here. But if you had a different interpretation of what you think the speaker thinks the good life um, was, then you can feel free to obviously pull out different values that I'm about to share with you right now. So the final step in this is really thinking about the value system of the speaker based on all this analysis I've already done. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is that we already just determined yesterday that good life is in the times with less money. Again, this is my personal pull out from yesterday, but maybe yours is different. That's totally fine as well. So because I'm going um, along with the assumption that the good life is when um, the speaker had less money, um, I'm going to then have my values aligned to that sort of mantra that the speaker um, believes in and carries out in their everyday life. So I think one big value of the speaker is that they're humble. Um, yes, they sort of describe the challenges of when they had less money, but you don't really see them complaining much about it. If anything, they're sort of turning it into like a positive thing that sort of made them into who they are today. Um, and they don't like, they don't really like complain about the situation they're in. Although I'm sure it's frustrating, it's clear that they're very humble um, and they're not going to admit that they were struggling. It's, um, it's very much something that they embraced because it made, it's, it made them who they were. Um, who they are today. I also mentioned um, the value of being resourceful. Um, it's clear that with, without little food or um, a dr drink in them, they were still able to make ends meet and um, walk to get their paycheck, even when they were probably incredibly hungry and they made the most of it. So they're pretty res resourceful. That's definitely a value to them, sort of making, making a lot out of, out of a little. Um, it's also very clear that um, the speaker has a value of working hard and persevering. Um, and I, I don't think the speaker would ever say that things were handed to them. It's, it's very clear that while they had struggles, they were able to make ends meet and even experiencing experience some moments of um, privilege because they worked hard and they persevered. They didn't let their um, experience or their situation um, control them and dictate how their, their life was um, carried out. They actually, they were the pilots of their own destiny. Um, and then this, this part, um, the value of individuality and uniqueness connects back to the, the choice of words when they said like everyone else. It's clear that um, even though like many other people are poor, uh, that they felt like when they were poor, that um, was actually like a defining characteristic of who they are. And when they had a little bit more money, they just felt like they were everybody else. Um, but but making making the tough decision to walk to work and to give up the things they probably had to give up and only live on coffee and bread actually made them an individual, made them unique and contributed to their um, powerful story. Whereas when they had a little bit of money, they were just like everyone else living off of um, luxuries like roast chicken and red wine.
And then simplicity is a big thing as well too. Uh, that's a big value because clearly um, they prefer living a simple life. I don't think the speaker would say they preferred being hungry, but I think they were okay with it because they knew that every couple of days they would have a little bit of um, a little bit of luxury in their life, and that was okay for them because they knew that um, that was coming. And so the the other days where they had to basically have nothing and work really hard, um, they were okay with that simple life because they made ends meet. And again, it made them into who they are today. So these are like the main values that I pulled out just from my own interpretation of what I thought the good life meant from yesterday. Again, you have you may have a different interpretation altogether of this, and that's totally fine. But because I went with the belief that I think the speaker preferred living a more simplistic, um, grittier life when they had less money, I um, use that to, be, to make inferences about their value system as a whole. And that's what you have to do um, when you think about this on your, on your own. So that's all for today's lesson. Make sure you complete every single component of the lesson, the read, think, talk, write, and the closing. When you're done with all of that, um, it is okay to look ahead at what's gonna happen tomorrow, but I quickly wanted to just go over at least the learning target with you for tomorrow so you knew what to expect. So tomorrow's lesson is lesson 22. And the learning target is I can complete first reading annotations to help with comprehension and future analysis of the text. Yes, we are engaging in, in another first read tomorrow. And that's because it's gonna be a second poem that we're gonna look at this week. So it's not gonna be the good life anymore. It's gonna be a poem called Money. As always, thank you so much for learning with me today. It was a pleasure. A few quick reminders. Number one, don't forget to talk about your lesson with someone. Number two, read 20 minutes and complete a reading log entry. The reading log is at the front of your packet. So make sure you go back to the front of your packet to find the reading log. And number three, practice reading fluency using the first or second page of your weekly reading. So um, if you forgot everything about fluency, that's okay. Go back to the front of your packet. There's directions there and you can use your weekly reading for the fluency work. As always, email your teacher. Um, if you need any support, you should know their email by now, but in case you don't, um, this is an example um, of how an email would look in the district. It's just the first name, that last name at DetroitK12.org. Hope everyone has a great day and to remember, keep learning.